So what the experts have told do shipping containers have told us is we'll put the panels up vertical instead. And so we're putting them up like this. And now for putting the adhesive on the panels, what we'll do is we'll just put a zigzag bead of adhesive all the way up this rib here, do the same thing here, and then because we have a dovetail ribbed surface that actually fills with adhesive and mechanically locks the panel in place, we want to make sure we line up with that. Experts taught just put a bead of adhesive across each one of these and just simply use the insofast panel. As a guide. As right? a guide, yep. And then you'll literally just push the panel up in place, interlock it together and push it in place. Now if you have a nice straight shipping container, you, you really want to go through and pound out your dent so you're within about a half an inch. We have about a half inch capability or three eighths to a half inch capability for uh, smoothing out the wall. Yeah, and kind of, it kind of acts like a liquid shim to flatten out your wall. So there's a whole bunch of strength, but what we want to do is want to make sure that we get that interlock glue into here because when you put your finishing material like the drywall or cabinets, that this lock, that this bond, that this stud is going to hold the weight of the finishing material and not stress the, the bond of the foam to the steel flute or the rib. Correct. That's the reason for the extra adhesive. So all the adhesive, the adhesive that bonds into this rib dovetail here has almost 100 pounds per square inch of holding power on here. So you're talking almost uh, you're over 250 pounds uh, of bond strength per, per per attachment point on the stud here. So and, and there's to, and there's six of them on uh, on average per per panel, right? Correct. So when it comes to attaching to cabinets and so forth, I mean you you're generally looking at a high load would be 100 pounds on the cabinet, mm -hmm. and that really realistically will have two fasteners at the top and then you can do two fasteners at the bottom uh, so that's as well. 50 pounds, well that's 25 pounds per screw that it's really holding. Right. And then each one of these holds, what did we figure, 250 pounds? About 250 pounds. So we have a 5 to 1 safety factor, is that a 10 to 1 safety factor? Yeah, well I mean what really matters is when you load up that cabinet, that cabinet's hanging weight out the wall. So uh, as you load up the cabinet with 100 pounds, what, what's the difference is, I mean, actually we'll have some pull off, it's not all 25 pounds, there's 25 pounds load per screw if we have 100 pounds in the cabinet in shear, yeah. but we also have some pull off in there as well, and, and with 100 pounds in the cabinet, cabinet, I think it calculates out to about 30 pounds of pull off, uh, which is more than capable of a, a single drywall type screw. Certainly so, we might be using cabinet screws. Which which we've tested and that's over 300 pounds of pull out on a cabinet screw, right? Correct. So if you had a hammer and you were yanking that screw out of the stud, it would take 300 pounds of torque. And if you're kidding, you can really have these studs anywhere you want along here. Yeah, you're so not limited you to, to what the factory is, said was the perfect spacing, which was eight inches off, eight inches off that. This interlock is holding that together. That's exactly true. If we don't do that interlock, you can see if your if your container isn't flat, you could have you could have your panels kind of up like a deck of cart crisscross mm -hmm. until you put that top row on. That really straightens everything up. And because the panels are all interlocked together, or when you start adding more panels, you'll see that the interlock gets flatter and and shorter. When you get there, so now you now you're not yeah, dealing shake, with yeah, shake that. dealing That's with really more important. more of a, a solid a solid panel there. The adhesive actually spans over the gaps and fills in the irregularity. So if there's a dent, you'll use more adhesive. It acts yeah. like a liquid a shim. Big, a big dent in here really isn't a problem. And let's just say you come back to this and you get this hollow sound. Literally, all it takes is is a drill bit and you can drill through and you can take the caulk gun and you can squirt more adhesive behind there and it will set up. If you have a real big hole you can take the expanding foam adhesive and put it back there and that will also do a nice job. Another thing that people ask us is wiring. So how to do wiring. 
All right, and obviously you've got the vertical flutes in here, so that's simple. But you can also do the horizontal. I'm going to slide this back here just so you can, so it can highlight the chaseway in here. And literally, the trick to the trick to doing the wire is bending over the end. Now this is a heavy 12 gauge or 10 gauge piece of wire here, uh, so just bend over the end, and then that allows it to slide through easily between the between the chaseways and slide all the way through so you can see if we pull this apart it's already slid through there. the eight or ten or twelve feet work really nice that's good i i don't i mean it's that simple roof application is the exact same thing the only thing with the roof application is you'll use a a support two by four underneath just a little bit less than what the height is but doing the ceiling first is usually what's done, and then you'll do the walls. And uh, if you have a gap, you can spray it, spray foam in any gap. So mm -hmm. with the containers, I mean, you really have a perfect seal, so you have no air infiltration or anything. You don't have any condensation or very little sweating. I mean, just air sealing around your outlets. Certainly putting a bead of caulk at the bottom and the top and uh, keeping any sealing it at the bottom and the top is considered a best practice and any around any openings or windows well we'll throw one down on the floor too because let 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 them see that it can be used as a floor on the floor after you do the walls and this it really doesn't make much difference what direction you do the the floor and it really comes down to if you want and gives you a nice solid backing and you can actually run electrical and so forth under your floor and put outlets in the floor if you wanted to.